it's Amanda from the Hinman Holistic Health Institute and today I'm going to share a totally vulnerable experience that happened over the weekend last Saturday and just it's real life stuff so I might as well share it and see if you can relate. Um, so every Saturday morning I teach a barbell strength class which is a pretty strenuous physically demanding class. I love it. I have a great group of people that come and yet it still tires me out and then afterwards I have a routine of kind of going to Costco, going to Mariano's and stocking up on groceries for our family for the week. So I'm lugging a whole bunch of heavy, you know, huge Costco shopping bags and cases of Pellegrino and all that good stuff. So it really ends up being two hours from 8.30 to 10.30 on Saturday mornings that I get physically drained. Like I am aware now, even more so, how much my battery is just kind of needs, needs recharging. And what happened last Saturday was I walked in the house feeling, um, you know, like I said, in that space of, okay, I've, I've done so much, I've taught a class and I've gotten all these groceries for the family to find the girls, all four of them were doing this like crayon experiment. They were trying to make lipstick out of crayon and coconut oil and cornstarch or something. Needless to say, like red gooey dye stuff was smeared all over the counter and used my scrub brush that I used to clean dishes. It was like all gunked up and caked in there. So I totally flipped my lid. I was like, you guys, what are you doing? Where's dad? Why isn't he watching you? Oh my gosh, you totally ruined it. I was like totally went off. And I was like, this is just not, I, I was not in the space to handle that uncertainty in my life at that moment. And what I discovered was that Afterwards, I you know I said, Julian Isabel, you're old enough, you're responsible, you're responsible for paying and replacing the scrub brush that you use. I wanted to teach personal responsibility and all these great intentions. And then later that night, Julia had a couple of girlfriends over for a sleepover. And she wanted to repeat the same kind of, she loves doing experiments. So kind of a similar experiment with a blue crayon this time and all this stuff and make some goo packs. Or I don't even know what they were making. And what I discovered was it was actually kind of, eye-opening and sad. It was sad for me because her two friends were getting involved in this process and like totally laughing and giggling and yes, making a mess and smearing it on their clothes and having fun and she was completely anxious about it. She was totally freaked out. She's like, guys, guys, stop, stop. We're making a mess. You can't do this. And she's like, we're going to ruin it. And she gets so worked up and I realized I taught her that, right? She was just mimicking the exact same response that I had to their creative fun time that they were doing in the morning. She was mimicking with her friends. And that was like such a clear, cause I think cause it was like so the same day, right? It happened to me and then it happened to her. It was such a clear example of how when we are not self-aware and, and really taking care of ourselves, we can have a dramatic impact on our kids without even realizing. We are a role model for them all the time. And I'm gonna go into some steps that I really stop to self-reflect and think about. So that hopefully if you have situations that are similar that you can relate to, you can use something from this. Um, first, what can we do? I use this Groundhog Day exercise from one of my mentors, Fabian Fredrickson, that is absolutely awesome. It's simple and it's easy, yet it's so effective. And it's really to just stop and reflect about what happened, what worked, what didn't, and what would you do differently in the future? What's your new non-negotiable standard? So when I asked myself, well, what worked about that, I guess, is that I learned how my behavior is dramatically impacting my kids. What didn't, what didn't work is my completely overreacting action about a little bit of washable crayon and what would I do differently well I really had to tap into what was I feeling in that moment to know that so step number one is to tap into what were you feeling and what were you needing in that moment when something didn't go as planned it's probably because one of your needs wasn't being met I mean, we are all inherently doing our best every single day as parents, and yet we make mistakes all the time. And the reason is because some of our own needs are not being met. So in that moment for me, when I reflected, I realized I was so completely drained and physically exhausted, I just needed to recharge my own battery so that I could have a little bit more to give and to be patient and to be calm. And I, I wasn't in that space, and I didn't have that awareness at the time that that was my first priority. 
what I was needing was, um, I guess, certainty, right? I was feeling drained, physically drained. When you're feeling emotionally drained or physically drained, your body is craving some certainty and some known expectations. I talked about this in one of our other blogs about the need for certainty in your life and uncertainty. And my body had a lot of variety. It had just been stressed and pushed to its limits. So it kind of just needed to calm down and have that safety, comfortable spot. So when I walked in to see a chaotic house, I didn't have what I needed. And another thing is I realized what was I what was I asking or what was I expecting, right? I was actually expecting that the girls would know what I needed in that moment. They they had no clue. They weren't even tuned into mom. They were doing their own thing and having fun. And Mike was doing his own thing on the computer. I hadn't communicated to anybody what I needed. And I was relying on them to fulfill my need without even knowing what it was. Is that fair? Absolutely not. So the first step is to know what you're feeling. The second step is to know what expectations you, what is coming up, like what expectations are gonna support your needs and what do you need in that moment. And then the third step is to simply decide to do something different in the future. So what I decided through this reflection is there's a variety of things that can come up that I can do differently. I can communicate with Mike before I leave in the morning to say, hey, what's your plan? What are you gonna be doing this morning? If you're gonna be tied up, um, then I know my expectation is that I'm just gonna have to take care of myself first and not even worry about having some certainty in the house when I walk in. If you're not tied up and you have some availability, would you be able to kind of oversee the girls and just make sure that things are not blowing up out of control in the house when I come home and communicate that first and foremost. Um, another thing that I could do differently, like I said, is just give myself the space. I don't need to put away the groceries right away. I can walk in the house, set everything down and go straight up to bed and lay down, close my eyes and give myself 15, 20 minutes. That would be healthier for everyone because it would put me kind of in that filling up my battery and recharging me. It would also allow the girls to keep having fun and do what they're doing and figure out how to clean it probably on their own before I interjected and like went crazy on them. And really kind of just look at things from a different perspective. So having this time to reflect and become self-aware and to take note of our own need for self-care. I think the bottom line, it comes down to the same message over and over, is I am a more loving, generous, patient, I just like myself better, who I show up to as a mom, as a wife, as a friend, as a you know coworker. I like myself better when I take care of myself. And it's hard to do. I know sometimes we're pushed, especially when we have a child that's struggling with you know, anxiety or seizures or allergies or ADD, all of these challenging circumstances. I know, we've lived it. And when I was in that mode, I was a low priority. I put myself last for a long time and things still continued to escalate until eventually that had to shift and I had to start to take care of myself so that I could be the mom that I wanted for my daughters. Really it comes back to the same message of becoming self-aware, learning how to have self-care so that we can then facilitate the best role model and be the best example that we want for our kids. Because I don't want to teach my girl how to be anxious about everything that doesn't go exactly her way. I want to teach her how if it's not going to her expectations she can do what she needs to do to take care of herself so that she can chill out about it, just like I want to do. So anyway, that's today's little tidbit. We have some great information. If you want to download a copy of that Groundhog Day exercise to use for your situation and anytime it comes up, I literally use it all the time in work, in family, in, in many situations. It's so useful. So feel free to click on the link in the blog and get the PDF and let me know your thoughts. Let me know what worked for you. If, if, can you relate to this? Have you ever had a similar circumstance or is this something totally different and totally shockingly new for you? Um, I'd love to hear from you and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks.